Hello everybody and thank you so much for joining me tonight at City Craft Club. We are going to be making this beautiful spiral bound hardcover gilded notebook using epoxy resin. If you've never used epoxy resin before, don't worry too much, it is not quite so complicated as it may seem. However, there are, of course, a few tips and tricks that I want to share before we get into the process. First and foremost, safety. Epoxy resin can technically emit toxic fumes depending on the resin formulas that you're using. The resin that I buy is labeled as non-toxic and per the brand does not require a respirator in order to be safe to use. That said, I do always wear a respirator just in case. Furthermore, I always, always, always open the windows, rain or shine, just to ensure that I have as much ventilation as physically possible. If you live somewhere where you're able to go out in a garage or a backyard, neither of which I have, totally do that. You'll also want to ensure that you're working on a completely level, even surface. So no bumpy slanted tables. I've done that before and it completely ruins the curing process, which is sort of the drying or hardening process. You could do your project on the floor. However, as I'm about to show you, it's super important to protect your floor. Resin is incredibly gooey and sticky and messy. There's virtually no way to sort of keep everything contained. So just make sure that you place some sort of plastic, waterproof, resin proof uh, material down on your floor before you work on your floor, if that's what you choose to do, or again, a very level table. Hi. Remove all of your pets from the room before you do this project. You will of course need resin. Resin comes in two parts, part A and part B, which is the resin itself and the hardener. This set comes with popsicle sticks, gloves, and beakers. You'll also need, of course, these silicone resin molds where we are going to pour our resin into. This set comes with three different sizes, including the metal binding rings and some other supplies. You'll also need a resin proof surface. I like to use disposable cutting boards, which can be adjusted and size of your workspace. You'll need gold foil, of course, if you want to create the glitzy gilded covers that I showed you earlier. You may also want to have some sanding blocks on hand just in case the edges of your resin notebook covers turn out to be a little wonky. And you may want to purchase a battery operated resin mixer, which is a lot easier, faster, and less tedious to use than a popsicle stick for mixing your resin. Of course, you'll also need paper inserts for your notebook. You'll want to have some sort of respirator or a N95 mask to ensure that the resin does not get into your lungs. Finally, you will need a separate vessel in which to mix both parts of your resin. I'm going to be using a basic Solo cup because it's the perfect size and they're disposable and easy to find. As always, I've linked all of the materials and products and tools that we'll be using in this project in the video description below, so they're all in one place and easy to shop before we start the project. First, slip into your gloves. Resin can really burn your hands if you don't have them, so make sure that you protect your skin. Speaking of protection, grab a disposable cutting board like I have here or some other resin-proof, waterproof surface uh, just to protect whatever you're working on and then grab your silicone mold. I am using an A5 size notebook mold here, which of course I've linked below. Then grab the resin itself. So resin comes in two parts, part A and part B. Part A is the actual resin and part B is what's known as the hardener, makes it nice and firm. Most importantly, we have to mix these two at a one-to-one -one ratio. So in order to do that, we're gonna use a little beaker slash measuring cup and we are going to fill each up to the 80 milliliter mark. First, grab part A and simply pour part A up to the 80 milliliter mark. Grab your second vessel. I'm just using a nice little solo cup here and pour the 80 milliliters of part A into said solo cup. It's quite viscous, so it might take a hot sec to fully come out, but you definitely want to ensure that you're getting 
all of the resin into that cup. You can use a popsicle stick if you can't get all of it out because again, we want this to be a super equal one-to-one -one ratio measurement of both parts. Next, we're going to do the exact same thing with part B, the hardener. So open it up, grab your beaker, and then pour part B up to the 80 milliliter line, just like we did before. And remember, it's really important that these ratios are one-to-one -one, or else your resin might not cure properly. And then grab the vessel that has part A in it and pour part B directly on top of it. Now it's time for us to actually mix these two parts. You could use a popsicle stick, which takes about seven minutes to thoroughly mix and your wrist might get a little tired, or you could upgrade to a battery powered resin mixer, which I like to use. That takes about four minutes to thoroughly mix your resin and it kind of does all of the work for you. If you do want to add that gold foil that I showed you in the beginning of this video, now would be the perfect time to do so. I am adding a total of five gold foil sheets. And as you can see, there is really no art or science to my process. I'm just kind of pushing them in with my fingers. Okay, so it's been four minutes. I'm going to turn off my little mixer. And now it is time for the most fun part in my opinion, which is pouring our resin into our silicone mold. So we're going to do this very, very carefully and super, super slowly because again, resin can get really messy and we also don't want to waste any of the resin because we did pour it such that it measures exactly to fit this particular mold. So just be really slow and careful and make sure that the resin goes to all four corners of your mold. You could definitely use a popsicle stick to smooth everything out and then wait at least 24 hours, preferably 48 hours for the resin to harden. It's been 48 hours, so our resin should be fully cured, which means it should be nice and firm and glossy and beautiful. I am just removing some flaky bits from some spillover, and it looks pretty much as we want it to look right now. So I'm just going to remove the resin from the silicone mold, which is kind of a satisfying process. <laughs> nice and firm, it's not bending, it's nice and even. Uh, the one thing I did notice though is that there are some rough edges, so we're going to have to take a sanding block to that. Of course, please be safe when you're doing this. I'm wearing an N95 mask, and I'm just taking this 80 grit sanding block to sort of get all the bigger bumps out. And now I'm going in with a 120 grit sanding block uh, to just smooth everything out and make it look really polished and professional. And because a notebook has two covers, we are going to have to repeat this entire process twice. Or if you want to get two notebook molds, you could just do them simultaneously. Now that we have both of our covers ready, it is of course time to add paper to our notebook. This one has six pre-punched holes, which I found super convenient. I did spend a hot sec looking at Amazon for this particular size, something that would align with this project. Um, so I will, of course, link that below. Blank paper is awesome because, of course, you can use it as a sketchbook, whatever you want, but you could also print on it, which is kind of fun. Or if you want something a bit more colorful, you can go for this lined, colorful rainbow option of paper that I found, also aligned perfectly for this project. I think today I'm going to go with the colorful option. And from here, just grab one of your resin notebook cover sides and slip it behind your paper stack. And then just sort of shimmy your paper and your resin cover such that the holes are aligned perfectly. And there's a little gap 
that we can thread this metal binding through. Leave the binding open for now and then grab your second side, your second cover, and simply slip it right on top of the paper and on top of the metal binding. Once that's done, clasp everything into place. By just pressing hard, you'll feel a nice click and you'll know it's secure. So we're almost done with this. It's looking pretty good so far. But of course, as you can see, we have three more loose holes. So let's grab our second metal binding clip and just thread it through those last three holes as we did with the first three. And just clasp them into place so they feel secure. And from there we have a beautiful functional notebook. I hope your notebook turned out exactly as you wanted it to. If not, if you had any questions, if I could have explained something a little more thoroughly, please do let me know below in the comments. Regardless, I would love to hear from you. Um, and if you're not a subscriber to this channel yet, I would super appreciate that as well so that we can keep each other informed on all of the fun crafty stuff that we're making. Until next time.